G'day everyone, thank you for tuning in. System setup time, and for this one, it's not really a video request, but it's sort of an extension of the system setup for a Solaris 11.3. And for this one, I thought I'd do Open Indiana Hipster 2017. Okay, a little bit of background re Open Indiana. At the end of oh, somewhere around 2010, during the time that Oracle opened up the Solaris source code and made it open source. A fork was, uh, a fork of Solaris, or of open Solaris, I should say, became apparent. And around, I think it was early 2010, Open Indiana started up. Um, basically, loosely based on, at the time, Solaris 11 Express, which was a preview to Solaris 11.1. Over time, uh, Open Indiana then became part of the Illumos distributions for Open Solaris derivatives. And you've got in that, you've also got Open SXCE, which is the um, Spark based derivative. Um, I think Mart UX at one stage was Spark based, but no longer is. And there's, a, there's others in there. There's Dealos, which is also Spark based as well. Specifically, Sun for you. Open Indiana 151A was uh, Sun for you compatible, but the one we're looking here is at the hipster one, which is uh, 2170502. So I thought I'd show you a full system setup for Open Indiana. So here we've got it. Here we've got it. Um, as you know, with VMware, it'll run on the Oracle Solaris 11. We have a 120 gig thin provisioned hard drive, monolithic, four gig of RAM, and we're using the Open Indiana ISO that I've already uploaded to the ISO data store on the ASXi server. Now, this looks very different to Solaris installation, and you'll see why um, shortly. Just as a, uh, just while we're waiting for this to boot, there is another video coming up as well. And that's actually going to be based on migration of VM. Now, Tanix Optics, <coughs> excuse me, Tanix Optics has asked me to do it. I'm, I'm like, no worries. So he wants to know about migrating um, VMs from one to another, or from one ASXi to another ASXi. So this is the uh, installation setup. You can see here it's very B free BSD like. Not so much open BSD, but free BSD. So there it is up there. Sunos 5.11, a Lumos 64 bit. As I said, it is based on the Solaris 11 Express um, system originally. Very loosely based on Solaris 11 Express. For those that would like more flexibility in their Solaris-like uh, operating system, the Open Indiana is actually um, fully open sourced. So in actual fact, there's more packages and applications available for it compared to that of Solaris in, in itself. Because it is an open sourced fork from Solaris, the package manager and the amount of packages available is vastly better so we've booted into the live session off the CD you see there it's got a DACP coming from OpenBSD and in the live session you're greeted with all these you are also greeted with a text installer if you wish to do it via console um, you guys know me I'm just going to take the easy way out with this we're going to just do a straight install off the here You've also got G-Parted as well to set up your partitions. Um, the live CD will give you a fair deal. You can see here it's a very GNOME-like environment as well. It is the GNOME desktop, similar to that of Solaris 11. So we will now go and install Open Indiana. As you can see, as I said, it's very, diff it, it's very similar. For those that have watched a Solaris 11 Express install, very similar layout here. As always, we'll just use the whole disk. As I said, 
I've done a 120 gig thin provisioned drive. Select Melbourne. Make sure you always select your time zones with this. And I don't bother with that. As you can see there, it's just after 20 past 12 here. Uh, now you need to also be aware to do your territory areas as well, so you get the right um, packages of plugins and locales. All right, now, this is all your, um, unlike Solaris, this is your root password. Okay, so let me do all my passwords and IDs and I'll come back. Okay, so we've got our root password set. Now, I can't remember whether this expires, but we'll, we'll test that out so I give you the right info. We've got your real name, your login name, your login password, and then your computer name. Now, obviously, you can name it whatever you like. Click Next. Now, this is where it differs between this and Solaris 11.3. You can see with this one, the whole install, the core setup is 5.7 gig, which is down 400 meg from um, Solaris 11.3. So we've got a 120 gig drive. That's the name of the software. That's the time zone I'm in. There are the languages and default location areas, and then username and host name. All right, now, as you can see, it's a little bit different here, but you can read it all there. Powered by Lumos. Now, the one thing I will give kudos to, to the Lumos team, I think I've said this in the past, much like most of their Open Solaris derivatives, the ability to use the operating system across your entire setup is phenomenal. Much like Solaris 11, you can have it set up as your server end and clients connect to it. Or you can have it as your server and use, so set up a Lumos on your server and set up a Lumos on your workstation. So you can actually use this probably better as a daily driver than Solaris in itself. But there's nothing wrong with using Solaris as a daily driver. As I said, I've done it many times in the past. Okay, once it's installed, we'll come back. Just thought I'd, uh, just while we're getting towards the end of this um, installation, the, uh, the team that develops Open Indiana is just phenomenal. The volunteers there that put the time and effort into setting this whole um, Open Solaris-like operating system up is just fantastic. The, Wikipedia, the wiki info page on Open Indiana is also very good. There's a lot of help there if you're getting stuck with it. Um, I spent probably a month, uh, late last year, earlier this year, I think, actually going through everything. And uh, it's just unbelievable. The, um, the packages that are available for it are fantastic as well. And also the sources for the packages, there's far more availability of them than uh, that of Solaris. It's not exactly a quick install, but Solaris in itself is not exactly a quick install either. So, um, you know, it takes a bit of time. If you're a lover of coffee, you could go away and make a cup of coffee, come back, and depending on how quick and how powerful your physical or virtual machine is, it should be done. There's the wiki page for it, wiki.openindiana.org. And as I said, it's a, it's a very handy wiki page to go to, especially if you are starting out, um, you know, if you're not going to go and try Solaris in itself, it's very handy to go to the wiki page for Open Indiana. 
Also, there are far more packages available for Open Indiana than there are for um, for anything else. Uh, Solaris, I should say. You'll also remember that I was toying with the idea of of running OpenSXCE on the e-server as my as the operating system of choice, but as I as we're aware, I had major trouble in getting that going. So. Don't forget, there are other Illumos distros that you can go and try. You can read all that there if you wish. All right. Once it's all done, we'll come back. Okay. So we're now ready to reboot the system. Total install time's around 10 minutes. But as I said, it depends on your hardware... Uh, the amount of RAM, obviously the speed of the processor, etc. Now, if you're running a dual-core proc with, say, 4 gig of RAM, it's obviously going to be mildly quicker. In the case of this virtual, I only had 4 gig of RAM on one processor. So it wasn't exactly rip-roaringly uh, quick. Don't forget, if you have had trouble with the installation, much like Solaris 11, you can go to the installation log um, and it'll be able to help you debug any installation issues you we've had. But as we've had none, we'll go for a straight reboot. The other thing too, with the, I'll just mention this, the G part of partition. If you have got a, um, say, a 250 gig drive and you are going to set it up as some sort of uh, partitioned drive, you may have at running, you know, this system on one partition and then maybe a Samba or NFS raw share on the other. Um, uh, you can set it up that way as well, or you may want to set up multiple partitions to install it into various areas. The SMF uh, things can take some time too, depending on the configuration of your hardware and everything like that. It's very similar to most other uh, Unix systems and Linuxes as well with your SMF um, descriptions. It depends on how big you've made it and uh, obviously the hardware system. I only had four services to load out of, uh, what, about 180 there, I think. Now, obviously, we're not logging into a console because we're going into a, uh, a GUI. Again, it'll take a bit of time to settle itself out. Much like Solaris, it does take some time. All right. And here is Open Indiana installed. You'll see here we've got a IP address and everything, including a MAC address. If we want, we can click on that. Oh, hang on. See there, you can do your locations and everything. Got gotcha. you. Network modifiers. All right, so let's go through what you get with your core system uh, once you've freshly booted into. So it's very similar to Solaris 11. See that we've got some applications. We've got the Matei color selection scheme and the image viewer. We have our Avahi SSH server and VNC server browser for obviously browsing to VNC systems. We've got Firefox, Pigden, and Thunderbird again. We have our Document Viewer and Matei Dictionary. We have Glade again for object-oriented stuff. 
pretty basic sound and video, and then all of our system tools, and this is using the Matei terminal. Places, pretty standard system preferences. You'll see up here that we've also got some hardware preferences. We've got our network proxy. We can change the look and feel of it. We've got some uh, 3M input methods, uh, NVIDIA server settings and our screensaver, as well as all our personal stuff. Administration, and then the control center. Now the control center is your everything. This is your full setup, everything. There's your networking and everything like that. It's a lot easier to, to use this than the individual systems I've found over the time. Okay, so now what I'm looking for is our... Um, I'm going to find our packages. Hang on a minute. I actually can't remember where the packages are. Uh, I'll find them. Bear with me and I'll go hunting for the package manager. Hang on. Just while I'm hunting for the um, package manager, which I can't actually remember where it is. <coughs> Just wanted to quickly tell you um, exactly the same scenario for SU in this as it was in Solaris 11. So you open up a terminal, you'll get SU, you type... I typed the wrong password. You put in the root password that you originally used during the setup. It'll tell you it's expired, so you add another root password. All right, now let me go find the package manager and I'll come back. Oh, good grief. Okay, my brain is not working. This is my fault. Um, you install packages via PKG in the terminal. So in other words, you would go uh, CD slash... Oh. CD slash PKG install VLC. I think that's how you do it. That is how you do it. I keep forgetting, Open Indiana works on the command line for PKG. I don't know whether there is a package manager or add more software uh, thing for Open Indiana. Someone will be able to tell me. But to get your packages, um, it'll use the default repositories that are available through the Illumos distribution. But you can add repositories from Smart OS as well if you feel the need to. And as I said, the wiki page for Open Indiana is a plethora of information to help you out with. I actually haven't used Open Indiana hipster. F I actually haven't used Open Indiana for a while, so I've sort of forgotten it. All right, once this is done, we'll come back. Okay, I've done something wrong, but hopefully you'll get the general gist of what you sort of got to do. But basically, to install packages, you do it from the terminal. As I said, I don't know if there's a GUI of this. Uh, I haven't found one, but um, obviously someone will be able to tell me what I've done wrong. But basically, that's how you set up Open Indiana. Um, now, there are a few uh, tips and tricks I've got here. Obviously, there's your PKG. Um, you've got package information. You can search for packages. Um, you've obviously got your... Um, image constraints and everything like that so have a play with it uh, if I remember how to install packages in Open Indiana or a Lumos I should say I will uh, let you know in another video and uh, hopefully uh, I'll have better luck anyway there we are full installation and a quick tour of a Lumos's Open Indiana Hipster 2017 05 02 thanks for watching please like comment and subscribe cheers